Hey everyone, Lewis Lee here hiking all trails in the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. I am recording at the Summit Metro Parks Bike and Hike. I started at the northernmost end of the bike and hike trail, which starts at the Alexander Road area, hiking my way south towards Hudson, Ohio, towards 303, Route 303. And of course, the bike and hike goes further than the 10.5 miles that I'm hiking today. Um, but the, the area that I'm hiking is specifically within the Cuyahoga Valley National Park territory. So that's why I am checking it off the box today. There are many different entrances um, and trailheads to this bike and hike. You don't have to hike the full 10.5 miles like I'm doing today. Um, but this is very special for me because um, over the past couple of years, I've been training for long distance races. And at the Southern end of this bike and hike trail is where I live. And I've used this trail often to, uh, to train for the races that I ran. Um, so for me, this is special because on the northern part of it, uh, I'm unfamiliar with it. This is my first time hiking this part of the trail. So it's gonna be a great learning experience. And one of the things that I've noticed at the trailheads here, when they have signs for the bike and hike, is that um, this trail is maintained and managed by the Summit County Metro Parks but is also in partnership with First Energy. And as you may notice behind me um, and throughout the trail, these are electrical lines that are running alongside of, in parallel with the bike and hike trail. And this points uh, out a few things in my mind in terms of nature and industry. So that's that's what the, kind of like the theme running through the history of the Cuyahoga Valley National Park is this idea of conservation and, and uh, preserving land in between two industrial cities, that is Cleveland and, and Akron. So if you pull up a map and you look at Cleveland and Akron, in the middle of these cities is a big green blob. <laughs> and that is the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. And uh, the Cuyahoga Valley itself, the valley as an area, was long uh, a region in our community that, that goes past and, and is older than the national park itself. And with my, uh, my attempt to hike all trails here in the Cuyahoga Valley National Park, part of that has been me studying the history. And there's a great resource from Cleveland State University um, that has a series of interviews of oral history of people that have seen firsthand the, the changing of this valley over the course of 75 to 100 years. And one of the things that I've learned is that what we're seeing today is not what we saw 100, 150 years ago. This area, the Cuyahoga Valley, 100, 150 years ago was predominantly farmland. And with that farmland came um, many crops, but not a lot of trees, not a lot of forests. And um, since the National Park has co come into this area to conserve the area, it has brought back an ecosystem that was unknown, or I should say not visible to generations, three or four generations ago. And uh, there's certainly mixed emotions uh, about that idea of conservation because what are you conserving? Are you conserving nature or are you conserving the culture? 
and the Cuyahoga Valley National Park has tried to do both, uh, specifically around farming and the countryside farm initiative. But uh, this idea of having forests, I having um, new land pop up is an idea that preceded our agricultural ancestors. So if you were to fast forward 150 years ago, in this valley, you'd see more farms than you would see the, the pine forests that, that we have here now, amongst other natural habitats. Also, another example would be white-tailed deer. So let's fast forward, or excuse me, let's rewind 75, 100 years ago, we had less white-tailed deer then than we do now. The white-tailed deer population has exploded with the presence of the national park coming in and preserving this area and saying, you can't come in and hunt. So that population has exploded and, and that's created another type of ecological situation where you see other increases in things like coyotes. And uh, some suspect in, in the decades to come, you'll see other predators coming in this area, such as black bear. But that's to be determined. What I wanna land on in this idea of conservation is that root word, conserve. And sometimes that root word, conserve, thinks, brings the mind to this idea of, of staying where we are, or in fact, going back to where we came from. And in a sense, it's, there's this two things pulling against each other, conservation and, and progress. Progress in terms of a human perspective is what we're about. Look at, look at history and in one of the books that I read that was very informative in history was A Brief History by William and Ariel Durant. And in that book, as they outline the past 500 years of recorded history, they define progress as um, the ability for life to gain more control. And that's what we've done as humans. We've, we, we have looked at our environment and over the past 5,000 and 10,000 years, we have gained more control over our environment. And as a result, we can consider that progress. So in terms of wildlife, in terms of our natural environments, in terms of our natural ecosystems, you're seeing that play out. You're seeing more control over our environment. And, and the Cuyahoga Valley National Park and specifically the, the governing body, the national park system is a testament to that. These are professionals that understand natural ecosystems and what needs to be put in place, the structures that need to be put in place to promote these ecosystems. And that is a result of being able to control our environment. So in this, in this pursuit of conservation, embedded in that is progress. And in terms of tying back to First Energy, um, which is a powers utility company here in Northeast Ohio, uh, I'm sure uh, they span other regions, but specifically here in Northeast Ohio, First Energy, the energy lines that you see behind me right now is a sign of progress. It's a sign of control. Some people believe it might be an eyesore to be out here in nature on a trail and walk past these electrical line towers. 
but at what expense? It, the, the power that, that these lines provide to us, for example, in terms of human progress and control, how many countless meals does, has this electricity provided to electrical ovens through our communities? Or uh, providing electric for people to dial 911? Or dare I say, uh, electric to power hospitals, to, to keep people alive on, on ventilators, or and or the electric used to deliver newborns. So yes, um, there's an argument that could be made that this power line may feel out of touch in, in terms of what we're doing uh, to preserve nature. But I think the valley and the valley's history is a story of living with nature and not living only in nature. And I think that's an example of, of how, uh, in terms of our society, how we should be thinking and, and, and working towards in the future. And, and, and in that term, it sounds counterintuitive, counterintuitive to think of conservation as con <laughs> conservatism, blending it in with this idea of progress. I, and being progressive, moving forward in a way that embraces what we know of the past. What you're seeing right now, these fields, they proceed the farmers that came four or five generations before us. So mixing the two, mixing the three, in terms of the, 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 natu the natural ecosystems, the native plant life and animals that lived here before the farmers, incorporating the knowledge and the control that farmers have of our area, and then also incorporating that with modern technology, those, those aspects of, of humanity and how we show up and live with nature. I think that the National Park Service, I think that the Cuyahoga Valley is a shining example. It's a, be it's a beacon of how we can live with nature and not against nature and not only in nature. So that's what I'm picking up here on the bike and hike trail. I have 7.6 miles left to go. So I'm going to try to conserve my energy and try to make it happen. But until next time, I hope you like this video. I hope you subscribe to the channel as I hike all trails here in the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. Thanks for tuning in.